Another successful landing. <laughs> Man, I have completely cut out processed foods from my life. And let me tell you what, even though I'm still fat and bald and ugly, I feel about a thousand percent better. <laughs> um, we had a really lively live stream last night. I kind of have a good sense of humor, too. And uh, I was talking about ancient India, except back then India didn't exist. The last ice age, there are these rivers that dump into northern India, specifically just north of the Magadha Valley. Um, uh, definitely an expert on original, let me emphasize the word, original Buddhism. And I was telling people, let me just give you a couple facts without boring you with an enormous amount of history here. Um, they call Gautama, people say Gautama Buddha. Buddha is the non-person, it's a spiritual appellation. They call him Sakyamuni. Yeah, which refers to, Muni means sage, and Sakya is ancient Pali term for Scythian. Uh, the Scythians were, of course, Scandinavians, yeah, steppe people. And uh, there's also, too, the reason why the earliest Upanishad, the Brihadranika Upanishad, the principal character, his name is Yanyavalkya. And I don't know about you, See, the Upanishads are attributable to India, but India didn't exist back then. Um, I don't know if you could discern this fact, but I don't know if this word sounds Scythian, or we could just say Nordic, or, or Nordo-Germanic. Uh, doesn't matter, and we're referring to a particular region way north of present-day India, where the people came down during the last Ice Age. It, it, does this sound... Tr traditionally Tamil, we say Indian, or does it sound Nordic? And uh, the word is Yanyavalkya, because that's a principal character in the Brihadranyaka Upanishad. I'll let you make the decision on that. Um, I'm always interested in the truth of history rather than the history that uh, you know we were told in high school and college, which of course is all lies, conjecture, and nonsense. But specifically, this uh, video is about something that is opposite. And there's no video on YouTube about this, and it's actually incredibly important. I don't discuss uh, religions at all. People say, well, you discuss Buddhism at all, all the time. Well, I discuss original Buddhism, which was not a religion. It was a liberation ontology based in wisdom, specifically a form of monistic metaphysics. Now, there's a word you'll never hear on uh, TV or a documentary. It's called monism, M-O-N-I-S-M, -S yeah. It refers to the principles as taught by Pythagoras, Plato, Plotinus, Proclus Nemanius, Iamblichus, Syrianus. Uh, original Buddhism was uh, non-dual monism, or as in Sanskrit, Advaita Vedanta. Um, people say that uh, the founder of Advaita Vedanta was uh, Sri Sankaracharya. And uh, that's also too incorrect. Um, non-dual monism or non-dualism existed within the Upanishads and it existed uh, well before the founder of Advaita Vedanta, so-called founder of Advaita Vedanta, and Buddhism. And also, too, it's just the original thread. India and Greece had a lot of uh, back and forth between their philosophers. Even on the 13th pillar edict of King Ashok, said that uh, edicts and principles were being observed by King Ptolemy II of ancient Egypt. So, on the pillar edict of King Ashok, yeah, in ancient, ancient India, they're talking about uh, the principles being adhered to and followed by ancient Egypt, specifically the reign of King Ptolemy II. Very fascinating. There's a little tidbit of history you'll never come across. But specifically, in regarding the metaphysics, the entire world today revolves around two things, like 99.999%, and this is all anybody knows, and I'm not interested in either one. I actually get offended when people say, are you an atheist? Like, oh my God, no, I'm not an atheist. A uh, true atheist, by the way, is a metaphysical atheist. We could just completely leave God out of the picture here, you know, as debating God or no God, completely an irrelevant argument from somebody that has any wisdom at all. It's not important. A uh, true atheist is a metaphysical atheist, which means that they're an atomist or a materialist 
forgetting God completely, just leave it out of the picture. There's no need discussing or debating that at all. It means that there's no substrate. Everything is just random happenstance and complexity in nature is just like a cosmic flatulence. And uh, that is, by the way, you look up that term, it's called metaphysical atheism. It has nothing to do with true atheism or atheos in Philippus 29d, the first mention of the word atheos was not a, about the denial of God, it was about the denial of metaphysical substrates below phenomena. In other words, there's nothing, you know, there's no signal in the radio, there's no soul coordinate to the body. There's no soul in the body either, but that's not a denial of the soul. There's no signal inside the radio, but that's not a denial of the signal. As we call the devil being in the details, because the devil is always in the nuance and the details of uh, metaphysical principles and subjects, which finer minds grasp, but lesser finer minds, or coarse minds, as the ancient uh, Pali saying goes, cannot grasp. I've never been interested in religion, and I've never been interested in materialism, atomism, metaphysical atheism. These are antinomies, kind of like the opposite sides of a coin. It's useless and futile to be debating them. People are saying, well, you know, what's the superior side? You know, the head side of the coin or the tail side of the coin? I got a coin here somewhere, huh? And the answer to that is neither one of them is important because that's all people do. The whole world is always caught. This is an ancient saying, by the way, too. The whole world is caught up in antinomies. Asti, nasti, that's ancient poly for is there or is there not? Is there, is there not? And that's all human beings today do either, too. They're, we're all debating 99.99% of us debating the head side or the tail side. Well, this is better. No, that's better. A true metaphysician is interested in this, the, the silver. This isn't silver, but you know what I mean. The actual substrate that's opposite to both of those, because what's opposite of the head and the tail is the substrate. The actual material upon which the head and the tail are imprinted. And when it comes to uh, foundational uh, metaphysics and cosmic mechanics, there's only one logical one in the entire world, and that's called monism. You could say ancient Pythagoreanism, and surely existed before uh, Pythagoras, but we don't have records for that, obviously, so. But it's the same principles of original, and I emphasize the word original, Buddhism. Um, same principles of uh, Advaita Vedanta in its two primary texts. I think I got every translation that exists. However, I can read Romanized uh, Sanskrit really well. Upadisa Hasri and the Vivatudamuni. These are really, really great texts. By the way, if you want to get to the heart of true monism and not have to, you know, without being able to translate ancient Pali, which I know you can't and I can, and don't waste your life trying to learn ancient Pali, the way to get to the original is just to read a really good translation of like the Upadisa Hasri or the Vivatudamuni of Sri Sangha. And there's a thousand copies out there on the internet that are free download of these texts. Um, but that's what's opposite of the two antinomies of metaphysical atheism, i.e. materialism, i.e. atomism, and that of religion. This asti nasti, is there, is there not, you know, debating back and forth about God. That's, uh, that's a child's game. It's a uh, a fool's quest. People sit there debating back and forth, and debate is ultimately irrelevant. It's about uh, true comprehension, of course. But uh, I talk a lot in various videos about original Buddhism, but I myself am extremely, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? extremely adverse to being around a, a Buddhist because they know nothing about the original topic at all. I mean, literally nothing. And uh, so, well, how can we have a debate on Buddhism if you don't know actually what it taught? Well, my teacher said, well, it's great you have a teacher, some guy you like, but that has nothing to do with what Buddhism originally taught. And they just don't understand that. They can't connect. And this is the difference between religion and metaphysics, by the way. Religion is secularized metaphysics. You know what religion is? Here, here's what kind of religion is. You ever seen one of those uh, little things they sell for little toddlers that makes it look like you're driving a car? It's got a little uh, button here, and they set it in a child's lap when the real guy's driving, you know, the father or mother. And the little kid turns the plastic wheel and honk honk, and 
That, that's, that's, what, that's what religion is relative to metaphysics. It's just popularized, and what's popular is always profane, because the same word for popular is the exact same word for profane in ancient Pali, by the way, patujana, which is a neat word because it sounds like you're spitting. Patujana. <laughs> it's a wonderful word. Why am I speaking ancient Pali? Nobody understands me. But we were having this discussion last night, and just literally, I'm not exaggerating, the whole world, the whole world, 99.999%, basically 100%. They think there's just the head side and the tail side. You're either an atheist or you're, you know, in some sort of religion, creationism, some variety of Abrahamic belief system, which I don't care. I don't care what anybody believes. Um, a person is defined in profanity in one aspect by uh, desiring other people or wanting other people to believe things, or trying to convince them, hey, you need to believe this. And uh, I'm completely adverse to that. I could care less what anybody believes. It doesn't make any difference. It has nothing to do with personal attainment or wisdom. Um, anybody that wants power over others is by definition evil and therefore ignorant. So don't care what people believe. Don't care of convincing anybody to believe anything. It's absolutely not important as a true metaphysician. Absolutely unimportant. But it is shocking, not really shocking, that the world only knows of these two things. You know, you ask anybody. That's all they know of. People will say, well, what, what is opposite of nihilism, atomism, atheism, and uh, creationism? Some form of uh, religious uh, dogma belief system. It's like, well, that's all there is. Like, no. You know, it's like, that's like saying there's the, only the, the head and the tail of the coin. It's like, well, no, it's right there. There's the coinage. In this case, silver. This is not a silver one. It's not a really old one, but, you know, you get my point. A true metaphysician is only interested in the silver. What is the nature of the silver? What are the properties and attributes of the silver? Everybody else is just a fool arguing about the heads or the tail. You know, this side's better than this side. You know, this is the true side and this is the false side. No, this is the true side. The world revolves on antinomies, quote-unquote, Plato. The world revolves on antinomies, quote-unquote, original Buddhism. Um, the Upanishads. Uh, the Rig Veda, that's also a direct quote from the, uh, the Rig Veda. Metaphysicians are always interested in what is inverse of antinomies. And if anybody is interested in true metaphysics, then they themselves would be interested in that. Never care about what other people believe, you know. Life is short. Not important to care about belief systems or convincing anybody else to believe in one thing or not believe in anything that's a fool's errand and it's also by definition evil anyway there's a glimpse of original and true metaphysics and the principles of true metaphysics by the way so thanks so much for watching hope you like this video if not tell me how much you hated it <laughs> Goodbye.